folks, so as we say, the uh, CB1000R, um, they released a new model. This is it, well, I say new model, it's, you know, considering we're in 22 at the moment, it's a new old model, but this is the 2020. So it's the, uh, the first uh, generation of that, that second facelift. So they got a completely different appearance, um, all that kind of jazz. They got a different uh, ECU, there's the key. And there's some other little things within the ECU as well. Um, common thing owners tend to say about it is it feels a little flat below the five, five and a half mark. Um, on small throttle openings um, compared to the previous model. Now, I don't ride these a lot, um, if I'm honest with you, and I can't even remember if I've, I've ridden the previous model, but we are gonna test ride this one once we're done, uh, just to, to have a little feel of it. And obviously, the owner's gonna come in and have a little uh, test ride at some point as well, because he needs to have his suspension set up. More on that in a little bit. Uh, but here in the dyno room, uh, we spent, uh, a lot of yesterday, most of it in actual fact, uh, going through various uh, mapping options on the on the bike, um, which really you know you've got to you've got to test everything um, yeah, from throttle maps, ignition maps. The obvious is the fuel maps. Um, found that this sort of performs better with a slightly different AFR value to what we would normally do. Uh, which was interesting to be fair and noticed that uh, as it was correcting to what we would normally target We're actually seeing a, a slight reduction in power So we reverted to a previous number uh, that we've been working on and saw gains up the top Now the bike still does have the original sort of collector stroke cat box on there We'll come around during a video when we show you some of the suspension components that we'll talk about in a bit and you'll see the can arrangement on there but ultimately you know, we've seen gains and we've seen good gains. And the key is we've seen good gains below that magic sort of five, five and a half. And we've seen some fantastic gains uh, at the partial throttle openings. Top end, not so much, if I'm, if I'm being brutally honest, which I imagine is probably locked away in the exhaust system. Uh, but certainly the owner of this bike, when we chatted, he wanted more poke off the bottom, which I believe we've achieved, certainly numerically on the dyno on the computer we've achieved. Um, it comes down to the real world test ride. That's really what it's down to. Bum dyno, as I put it, comes down to that bum dyno. So um, let's have a little look at the, the bike running in action. We'll do some, we'll do some pulls uh, on the, for the video, just because everyone likes to, to hear these things uh, on full song. And then we'll come back, have a little discussion about some of the other things that we've done on it, and also take a look at the dyno charts.
So what Neil's done here is we have supplied this customer with a YSS fully adjustable shock. That's adjustable in rebound, compression, and preload. You can see there the addition of the remote canister there for gassing and obviously the compression adjusters. And I'm just gonna cut out that number plate as we come around here. We can see the particular exhaust that this gentleman has decided to fit down here. You can see that O2 sensor is removed. That's because we've deleted it from the ECU and you can see our logging landers uh, here in the exhaust. But there we go, back to that YSS shock. Pretty little thing, but that's, uh, that's not the point, is it, ultimately? Uh, we want to be able to, excuse the camera work here, we want to be able to install something that's compliant, certainly improves the ride. Uh, and once we put our custom setup to the, uh, to the, the customer, um, it's gonna be a different bike. So that's just a, an interesting little nugget. Um, obviously we are YSS dealers, supply fit, supply only. So it's the sort of thing you can give us a shout for. So you've had a little walk around there of the bike. Um, excuse the shaky camera work. This, this isn't my thing. This, this is my thing, not this. This isn't my thing, but this is. So the camera works a little bit ropey, but there we are. Um, so basically, um, had a little walk around, seen the, the shock there. Um, we've seen the type of exhaust he's running. Um, we know that he's still got the collector. Uh, from a suspension point of view, you, know, you might be watching this because you're interested in the CV, but we deal with everything. We deal with everything from motocross, enduro, sports bikes, road bikes, track bikes, you name it, fully authorised. Olin's, k -Tech. Um, we deal with Bitubu, Mupo, Nitron, goodness me, the list is endless. So that kind of thing, you know, if you need some contact, then drop us a message in the comments section or drop us an email or Facebook or Instagram, you name it, you can get hold of us if you've got any inquiries. So for now, what we're going to finish up with, we're just going to take a look at the dyno charts that this produced. And then right at the end, we'll just do a short video of the test ride. Hopefully we'll be able to get a camera set up so you can see the RPMs. And we're just going to do some, some pull runs from those lower RPMs just to show the how that bike drives forward. Um, and then we'll sign off from there. So once again, folks, thanks for watching. Stay to the end. Have a little look at that, uh, that ride on this bike. And uh, thank you. So here we are. Let's take a look at these dyno charts here for the CB. You can see there that we've done some extensive running, but luckily I've labelled them up. So let's look at the, the, the top number first. Everyone likes to see that. So that's 100% TPS, 130.2 um, without the map and that is now, we've got 134.14, quite a significant gain in this rev range at full throttle. And also down here, and despite our best efforts, we weren't able to extract much more than there. But you can see there, overall, a lot more power. And obviously, we introduce torque. That's naturally gonna be more torque as well being that torque is a calculation of power and revs. But one of the real cool ones, like I said before, is the partial throttle. So take away torque, because it's just gonna get too messy. There we have a 20% run. This isn't in and out, this is usually vibration or something like that on the drum. Uh, it's not that the power's going up and down, up and down and up and down. And now let's look at 20% mapped. Now that is a hell of a difference. You're looking at 21 to 33, 20 to 31.8. I mean here, obviously it's going off the back, 14 to 30, that's upwards of 15 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. So the people who are talking about that rev range there, you know, four, five to six, the gain is immense. You know, and that should translate out on the road to a much, much nicer pull away and a little bit more guts as you're, as you're accelerating through. Um, gains all throughout, to be fair, some not as staggering. We've got 40, so you can see the difference there, very similar up there, but obviously gains below 8,000. We've got 80, the gains there are reducing. 
that's very similar to the 100% run. So overall, you can see the difference is made numerically, but like I always say, the kid's in the ride. So let's go for a ride. So there we have it. That's the test ride. Now, uh, the test ride was done in nicer conditions than it is at the moment, which as you can see is bloody freezing, hence the hat. Uh, but what you can see on that is, is essentially we, we got it down to really low gears, low speed, to roll that throttle on. Not a hesitation, not a stutter, not a murmur. The thing was as smooth as silk. So if you want any other bikes mapped or anything like that, tap us up. We, we cover most machines. Um, the only ones that we really aren't doing at the moment are the newer Aprilias and KTMs, just while we work on a software solution. But other than that, a lot of the new Euro 5 bikes we can do. So give us a shout. And until the next video, stay safe.